So you're ready to start a YouTube channel but don't know what camera setup is right for you, keep on watching because I'm gonna walk you through three beginner setups that all cost about the same amount and are gonna give you amazing results. Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie Steckley and on my channel, I love to talk all things travel and filmmaking. Make sure you stick around and subscribe so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I post every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. All right, let's jump into it. Honestly, these all cost the same. The main difference is you probably already have an iPhone, so keep that in mind. Otherwise, these are kind of equal options with all different pros and cons that I am gonna walk you through today. Setup number one, an iPhone. Literally, you can make a YouTube channel with just this. I know it doesn't seem fancy or legit or whatever, but you can definitely do it because even with my iPhone 7 Plus, I can get pretty high quality video in the right lighting conditions. An iPhone can shoot in 1080p, 60 frames per second. That's literally the same quality as the Canon 80D. It can actually do even higher frame rates. It's just gonna be in lower quality. The audio is pretty good. And the bonus here is that if you don't wanna get a laptop with editing software, you can edit everything on your phone. If you wanna know more in depth about doing that, then you can check out this video I made about editing videos on your iPhone, but it's very straightforward. I think that this is a really good beginner package. Like you can do everything you need to do just with your phone. Obviously iPhones that have nice cameras like the 7 Plus or the 10 or whatever are expensive. They cost about $1,000, which is right around the cost of the other cameras. So if you don't already have this phone, then you might want to consider some of the other options. But if you're trying to do this totally zero cost, then use the phone that you have. The few tips I would give you about getting the most high quality video out of your iPhone possible is shoot with lots of natural lighting. Any camera is gonna look worse if it's super dark, but the iPhone especially. Make sure you get in front of a window to film. Also, just make sure you shoot horizontal if you're making YouTube videos. So many people are used to recording Instagram stories and making videos for Snapchat these days that they just throw up their phone and shoot a vertical video. If you're making it for YouTube, we're still in the era of horizontal videos over here, so just keep that in mind. Finally, use the back-facing camera as much as possible because it is higher quality than the selfie camera. Setup number two, the Sony RX100, mine is the Mark IV. This is an amazing, all-inclusive vlogging camera. There is so much that you can do with this and it is packed into such an adorable little form factor. It might seem expensive for a small camera, but what you get out of it is amazing. You can get amazing slow-mo with options of all different kinds of high frame rates. Plus there is manual exposure and manual focus on this guy, so really, you can do it all. Plus there's a flip up screen and you can see yourself the whole time. So it is great for vlogging. A few cons of this camera is that there is no external mic jack. You're forced to use the internal microphone unless you wanna record on something separately and then sync it later, but that's a lot of work. You can get little fuzzy protectors to kind of muffle the wind or whatever, but I just use mine normally and it's been pretty fine for me so far. The other con if you're looking for full flexibility is that there are no interchangeable lenses so you're stuck with the one that it has but it's got a pretty good range. So overall, especially for beginners, there is so much room for growth with this. You can start out with it using it in a pretty basic automatic way and grow with it to learn how to use all the different manual settings, experiment with the high frame rate and all that stuff and there's a lot that you can do with it. Beginner setup for vlogging number three is the Canon 80D. I am a big fan of this camera and always suggest it to people who are looking for a DSLR that can have some pretty good results but is a reasonable price. The benefit of this, of course, is the interchangeable lenses. You can slowly build your kit to get a more diverse range of focal lengths. This camera does shoot 60 frames per second at 1080p but unfortunately does not go higher than that. So if you want more extreme slow-mo, you're gonna have to use the RX100. In my opinion, the Canon 80D is easier to control in manual mode than the RX100 because there's a touch screen, there's a lot more buttons and scroll wheels to use rather than the RX100, you have to click around a bunch of different buttons to switch between shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Whereas since I've been using the Canon 80D for so long, it is almost second nature where my fingers have to go to change certain settings. So I really like that about it. I love using my Canon 80D for both video and photo. And I also do think it can be good as a transition camera into professional filmmaking because I'm a freelance videographer and my primary camera 
is the Canon 80D. I know some people would be like, but it's not full frame, but still makes good results, so whatever. Honestly, when it comes down to it, between these three main options, it's really a preference thing. Do you want something that's gonna be super portable and low profile like the Sony RX100, but at the same time, very powerful? Or do you want something that you can use to transition into professional creating? Because even though the Sony RX100 is arguably more powerful than the Canon 80D, people are not gonna take you seriously as a freelancer with a point and shoot. Or if you wanna keep things super minimal and just use what you have, you can always use your iPhone. So it really depends what your long-term goals are and what you wanna to work towards. All of these cameras are great options and I would recommend thinking about which one could work for you. If you're further interested in the Canon 80D, I would recommend checking out my video, how to take good photos with the Canon 80D. I know it can be kind of overwhelming when you get your first DSLR and you're not really sure how to use it, so check that out. But before you go, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Like I said, I post every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, and I would really love if you would stick around. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you are having adventures and following your dreams, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.